So hi, Microbe Hunter here again and today I'd like to talk uh, again uh, about the whole issue about magnification and resolution and uh, I've uh, received a in, quite an interesting question from one of my viewers again which I would like to share with you. Would you say that having a higher magnification beyond the useful magnification is, a go is good for some things, for example for focusing on a specific point? Although the image might be blurry It'd be easier on your eyes to see what's happening if the image is larger. Just an idea, but I honestly don't know. Thank you for the question. As a matter of fact, you already addressed two points, but I would like to add a third one that is not commonly discussed here. But I would like to simply start at the basics and explain also to those of you who don't know so much about the background of microscope optics a little bit of what we're dealing here with. Generally what you do is, is when you use a microscope is, is you are using a 10 times uh, eyepiece and then you change the magnification using the objective down there. And you get the total magnification of course by multiplying this. So for example I can get 100 times magnification by using a 10 times objective multiplied by the 10 times eyepiece a total magnification of 100 times. You can also get the same magnification by using a 25 times eyepiece and a 4 times um, objective. But that is rarely done. Why? Because it, even though you have the same magnification, it looks more blurry. So that is one reason why you don't do that um, or you don't do that that often. But I will actually talk about a few cases here or one case here why, where this might even be of, a, of an advantage. And now what we've got here in the question of the viewer is, is the following. Well, what happens if I'm already at the maximum uh, magnification that I have? Uh, let's say um, my, in this case uh, I've got a hundred times um, multiplied by 10 is a thousand times total magnification. And then I will make it even larger by using a 25 times eyepiece. So 2,500 times. Is this any good? Are there not any advantages to that either? too? And generally what I've um, always been saying is, is there's really no point to that because the image while it becomes larger it also becomes darker and also more blurry because you're already beyond the useful magnification. There's a physical limit of light that you can only have a certain magnification which is around a thousand times. And, but the question is, are there not any certain advantages? And I, in this case, I can say yes, there are certain advantages. If, if, for example, the object that you watch with a thousand times, if it is still too small, um, and if you want to have a further uh, magnification, then it's simply easier on your eyes. Um, however, um, there are also some disadvantages to that. And one of those is, is of course, the, besides optical reasons, like the image becoming a little bit darker, usually the 25 times eyepiece that you use, um, usually that lens diameter is much smaller, so it's a little bit more difficult to look through. And also the so-called eye relief is shorter. This means you have to look, uh, move closer to the lens. Um, so there are um, some ergonomical issues might be there if the 25 times magnifying eyepiece um, is, is not of a very high quality. But yes, I do agree with you under certain circumstances. Um, it is simply more convenient to make it appear larger simply uh, because then you see the object larger and you, you don't have to concentrate so much on a small um, detail. So that is essentially uh, correct. Um, but there is one aspect that I have not talked about yet in this YouTube channel and something that is actually not very commonly referred to. There are cases when you, for example, would like to use a low power um, objective and a high power eyepiece if you need a higher depth of field but also a high magnification. I think I have to explain this again. You have to understand that the low power objectives they have a larger depth of field. So this means that um, the uh, yeah the depth of field that's in a region on the specimen where the which is in focus and with a low lower power this uh, region is much thicker. So, for example, when you use a four times objective, then uh, and you look at the specimen, then the top part and the bottom part of the specimen um, are actually in focus. And uh, if you use now a higher power objective, then only a small region is uh, only in focus. So, for example, if you have a water sample and you observe it with a high power objective, then organisms that are floating in and out vertically. Uh, they go out of focus when they're above or below that. Yeah, so it's not only that you have to chase them horizontally, but you also have to focus at the same time and chase them vertically to keep them in focus. Um, so one way of kind of avoiding this is, is to use a lower power objective, which has a larger depth of field. And then you try to compensate the lower magnification with a higher power eyepiece. 
So what you then have is, is you have a high magnification, but also a higher depth of field. Maybe you don't have that resolution, uh, but that might be okay, because maybe you're still gonna see more, uh, because uh, you don't have to chase the organism vertically um, around. Um, and also, of course, I've not mentioned at all that, of course, uh, with the depth of field, to control the depth of field, of course, you can you also have to use the, um, uh, the condenser. Um, that's, that's a separate uh, thing. But generally, yes, there are certain uh, rare cases where using a high power objective, let's say, uh, let's say a, a 25 times objective and a four times uh, um, 25 times eyepiece and a four times objective. I've got it switched around, which will give you the same magnification as a 10 times and a 10 times, where this might be actually be of an advantage. So that is uh, basically a, oh, yeah, the, the short answer here. And uh, what your point was here is the following. Could it not sometimes be also an advantage to use a higher magnification simply because then it's easier to focus? Um, for example, certain digital cameras, they allow you to digitally zoom in on the screen, not the picture itself, but just on the screen. So it's easier for you to focus. I personally have not found this to be very yeah, useful in microscopy um, to use a higher magnification of focusing because I'm working with a fine focus all the time anyway. So um, usually when I do visual observation and not only I'm moving the object around X, Y, but also I'm focusing vertically, of course, um, to make sure that it's always in focus. So um, I was rarely, when I used it visually, I was rarely actually using um, yeah, a higher magnification to get the focus right because often the objects are not flat anyway um, and you have to use the focus knob all the time anyway. So I, so your suggestion um, that is actually I would say more useful if you are probably doing photography work where you have to adjust the focus uh, correctly but I would say less for visual observation. Okay I think uh, I hope that this answered the questions a little bit. Um, yeah thank you very much again for the question. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time and bye bye.